everything Snape related is holy. Every every image of him is a religious object with some kind of connection to him. Rose's house apparently had a whole room dedicated to like Snape posters and pictures, kind of like a shrine. See, that's what I mean. If I walk into your home and you have a dedicated shrine, red flag, red flag, red flag. You know what I mean? Like I'm not into that. You know, if you have like a dedication, you're like, I worship this character. Like I can't function because of this character. If I take away this shrine from you, are you gonna freak out and collapse? She feels that she is physically shoved to her knees by the spirit of Snape while in that room. Any See? representation of Snape is seen to be a point of contact to him. I promise to always be faithful in body and mind and never love another man. I promise to love and cherish you all of my life. I promise to respect and honor you all of my life. I promise to dedicate all of my life to you. I promise to stand by you in good times and bad times. I promise to protect and guard you and to prevent you from any harm. I promise to provide anything you need for you. I promise to take the best care of you. I promise to use your name with all the respect it deserves. Mm -hmm. I promise mm -hmm. to always wear the ring with your name in it as a symbol of my love. I mm -hmm. promise to obey you no matter what. Mm -hmm. I promise to respect your wishes and not be selfish. I promise to look after you in sickness and in health. I solemnly promise all of this to you, Sever Snape. My only love. As a Slytherin myself, I get it, but also. So yeah, this video is about Snape wives. This is a community which sprung up in the early 2000s, around, well, around 2005 actually, on LiveJournal. I was in high school. So I will admit it's a little bit before my time. Um, I was a child <laughs> in 2005. Oh. I was never on LiveJournal, but it, how could I not? I was on MySpace. Do this one. It's so up my alley. It's so good. I have relied on first-hand accounts of people who were there to try and piece the story together for you. I have done so much research. Yo, she got pretty eyes, bro. Is that some hazel eyes, bro? That's some pretty eyes, bro. I like bolted upright out of bed like two days ago in the morning and was like, Snape wives. I'm doing a video on Snape wives. So I've just been in like this Snape wives rage for the past two, three days. And I, I really feel like I've microwaved my brain. I feel like I've absorbed a small nugget of the insanity going on here. Mm -hmm. So what are Snape wives? Well, you know what? I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. I'm just gonna figuratively dump the ice bucket over your head. There's a great summary on fanlore.com and I'm gonna read it for you. The Snape wives, also known as Snapists, are a group of women who believe that they channel Severus Snape, allow his spirit to inhabit their bodies and speak to him of course, are engaged in romantic relationships with him and see him as a vital spiritual guide for their daily lives. They practice Snapeism, a new religious movement centered on Snape. They believe Severus Snape is not simply a character in the Harry Potter books, but an omniscient and immortal deity, and in fact believe that the books were written because J.K. Rowling was channeling Snape. There is oh, so, wow. so much- Wow, Nova, she's beautiful and a lesbian. Brittany, you have a chance. I am married to a very amazing woman. How dare you? How dare you, Nova? How dare you even put that energy into this bubble? Mikey with the super, super chat says, Ew, you're a Slytherin. Yuck, unsubscribed. What are you, a Gryffindor? Ew, you would be a Gryffindor. If anyone is a Gryffindor, it's Mikey, and it's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed for you. I'm embarrassed for your mom. Tell her I said hi. I lost her number somehow. Tell her I said hi, though. Much more to it than that, but that, that's pretty decent TLDR. The Snape wives themselves have written some pretty uh, punchy summaries of their beliefs as well. I believe that Severus Snape exists independently of J.K. Rowling. I'm yelling because this, this is all ca I feel like that's not possible. I feel like it's a little crazy to say I believe that Severus Snape exists independent of J.K. Rowling. The turf of all turfs. Okay. 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 I knew it, Mikey. I knew you were a Gryffindor. I knew you were. I knew you were. Ugh, Gryffindors and I, look, okay, Farm Brothers are Gryffindor. We get along. Okay, he is my favorite sibling, but let me tell you this. His Gryffindorness and my Slytherinness, okay? We're honestly the polar opposites, but we both have a great sense of justice within us. I just feel like pretending Severus Snape, Severus Snape exists outside of J.K. Rowling is a little crazy. Hello? Press play, girl. Caps. He is a living, feeling spirit. I believe anything is possible and that Severus does visit those he chooses to. Isn't he a fictional character from Harry Potter? He is in the book, yes. That doesn't prove anything. Let's just say Severus Snape goes beyond that and it's not easy to explain. I believe he is out there real enough to communicate. Wow, Discord just sent me a thread on Twitter. It says, I simply wish for JK Rowling everything she wishes for trans people. And someone replied, a man attacking J.K. Rowling again. And he said, where's the attack? 
And they said, you wished ill on her. Gaslighting much? Total misogynistic man. I can't tell how sarcastic this chat is, but that's pretty funny. Yeah, J.K. Rowling's obsession with trans people, it's a lot. And she needs to relax. As the trans queen myself, I'm going to, as the ambassador, let you know you're doing too much, J.K. And you need to just chill. Have you ever wanted something so badly that you ached from within your very soul for it, that it gnaws at your heart and very being? At times it brings tears to my eyes, and I find myself trembling from the need. I have never experienced anything this intense before now. There are times when I feel that my soul is being torn asunder with fierce desire. Obsession is a mild word for what I feel for Severus Snape. As you can imagine, there's a lot going on here. And I'm going to get into excruciating detail, don't you worry. But before we do that, I've got to tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, NordVPN. I've already been using NordVPN. Oh, Nord I love a VPN. I VPNs are great. I really I recommend VPNs. I want to keep up with the great Canadian. Especially her you. VPN. I hate new technology. That's my content. Derogatory nickname given to them by websites dedicated to making fun of them. However, oh wait, I missed that content. As far as I can tell, the Snape wives actually never called themselves Snape wives. Mm. Snape wives was a derogatory nickname given to them by websites dedicated to making fun of them. However, it's kind of the name they've been stuck with slash gone down in history with. They called themselves Snapists, but even that term was coined very very late in the timeline of this community, like after it was thought that they were already declining and losing most of their members, it's likely that someone just came up with Snape. This is why I don't want to be become a part of any of your communities. Because <clears throat> then you start fantasizing about fucking Snape. Like, don't get me wrong. I think everybody would call Snape a daddy in certain bubbles. Uh, but also, he's like a fictional character, guys. I feel like you shouldn't be obsessed with Snape or Jesus. But, you know, you do you. If you want to have a relationship with a person from a story, I... You know what? If as long as you're not hurting anyone, you know? Snapists to sound better than Snape wives. But like, it sounds worse <laughs> in my opinion. But anyway, it doesn't really seem like they called themselves anything during like the main events of their movement. But yes, they were married to Snape on the astral plane. And Snape wives feels fine as a name for that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call them Snape wives for the duration of this video. And if you are already sitting there and thinking, Damn. Just what the hell? Just, I, I want to study these people. You are not the first. Someone has, in fact, studied these people. An amazing source for this video was Snape Wives and Snapeism, a fiction-based religion within the Harry Potter fandom by Zoe Alderton. It was published in 2013, and it's a really good read. It's a very, it's a very fun and approachable read for an academic article. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It goes into even more detail than I have time for in this video about certain subjects, as well as the implications of, like, modern fiction-based religions on the internet, which Snape Wives are far from being the only ones. There's, but again, Things I, don't things I don't have time for. Um, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, highly recommend this article. It will be linked in the description. Two of the most prominent Snape wives and the main subject of Alderton's article were named Tanya and Rose. They were the only two Snape wives who were actually friends in real life. And I do imagine that that sharing something like that with someone in your in your day-to-day -day life and just not on the internet probably helped to strengthen their commitment to it quite a bit. The other members were spread out all over the world and, and to our knowledge. She talks too slow. Her storytelling skills are interesting. It's so interesting to me how different content creators make content. She has a million subscribers. This video has a million views. It's a year old. Interesting. Never met each other. Most of I have her at 1.2. She's, she's so cute. And I like looking at her, but there's not enough on the screen to keep my attention, which is interesting. I've been observing like my, who I pay attention to the most, like how I pay attention to things. I want, I want to be enthralled, but I'm like thinking about other things which might just be ADHD, but. The Snape Wives original posts are now lost to the internet, but one surprisingly intact relic is Rose's live journal account. You can see her extensive collection, probably hundreds of Snape edits and read some of her posts as well. Her bio reads, I am 43. I don't know when the last time she updated this was probably a very long time ago, but at the time I am 43. Married two times, divorced one time. I got two cats. My son tested for his second Dan in Taekwondo, ate the vapor, and broke a concrete block with a hammer fist. I have a long since I was 10. Fascination, obsession, and understanding for vampires. Three years ago, begin of April, I got in my first tattoo. It is of a rose, which pierces through the skin with its thorns, therefore leaves some drops of blood. Okay, Ebony Darkness. Also, I have Severus Snape's name tattooed below it. I am hoping to finish it soon with a profile of his over the rose. I love Severus Snape, beyond reason, understanding, or comprehension. I am completely and insanely obsessed with him since two he has helped me to open my yeah joe says pictures on the screen bro if they she had pictures i'd be much more but like i keep getting like 
Yeah, it's so interesting. I really am trying to pay attention. I like her. Like, no no shade, right? But yeah, like, uh, everyone keeps saying, like, oh, I listen to her when I drive, or she seems like a good person to listen to when I do dishes. I, I would probably listen to her when I work out. So when I work out, I do, like, things that don't need to be, like, I don't need to watch. I kind of do one of those. But on stream, it's kind of different almost. Like, I'm too high energy right now. So I want something that's, like, high energy. But at the same time, like, I kind of get it. I kind of get the vibe. Like, this is interesting. Though I, I, I'm not getting a grasp on the story yet because I don't think I have enough visuals just yet. So let's see. Josie says, I miss your old plants background, Brittany, of your old place. I do miss that. Yeah, this room is very different. Like, that's – I'm just stuck crouched to a wall. You know what I mean? So I can't have very many things behind me. It doesn't make sense. It blocks the door. But, yeah, I think about redoing this room all the time. But, you know, I'm not ready to be a plant mama again. It's the spoons mind and see beyond. I have experienced phantom smells, tastes, sounds, feelings, and have seen him. I very much believe wow. in the paranormal, the metaphysical, or whatever names one wishes to use. I don't- Whoa, 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 whoa. Even if you believed in the paranormal, or in spirits, or in anything, how would any of that map on to a fictional character? Oh, <gasps> it's like shifting. Oh, is this associated with the shifting bubble? Is that why you guys sent it to me? Because if they're, quote, shifting, like in that bubble where they talk about it, then I guess, like, she would be transporting herself into the fictional, you know what I mean? Should I put subtitles on? Yeah, maybe that would help. So you know what I mean? Like, is she transporting herself to Snape? Because, like, even if you believe in magic and the metaphysical, what does that have to do with a fictional character that came out of the imagination of somebody else? Answered any religion, only to Severus, my guide, master, and much more. Why? Oh, it has to do with shifting. Okay, okay, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I almost got bored, but now I'm hooked again. Okay. Snape, though. Why Snape? <laughs> that is the question. It, it makes sense. Do you think the universe is like the Into the Spideyverse? No. Great movie, but no. And to me, especially right off the heels of the Tumblr Sexy Man video, like, we owe a lot of Tumblr Sexy Man culture to early Snape fandoms like this. Snape is... He's just that type. He's just that dark, broody bad boy. People have always been drawn to characters like him, whether that's other fictional, sh kind of shitty, borderline abusive men, criminals, anti-heroes, real-life serial killers. But Snape, Snape is so intriguing because- Oh, I realized I must be a lesbian because I really don't care about serial killers. You know who's the most boring people in the world? Serial killers. The most boring people in the world are serial killers. Jeffrey Dahmer, boring. Ted Bundy, boring. Ser men who serial kill might be the most boring people in the world. That's not interesting. You know what's more interesting? The victims. I want a documentary about how the victims got from point A to point B. Girl, how did it even work out this way? I want to know about the people that were married to the serial killers and never knew. I don't care about the serial killers. They're so boring. Oh, you kill people? Eh, so do the cops. Boring. It goes deeper than that. He appealed to a lot of people as like a kind of bullied, reject, loner figure that they could really connect with. So redemption for that character or power given to that character was very personal to them, very cathartic. Two users on one of the Snape Wives forums wrote, I do admit I'm a bit hung up on the character of Snape, probably because I recognize and identify much with the treatment he gets from both the other characters and with and some readers. And I see a lot of myself in him. I'm painfully blunt. I'm an intellectual. <laughs> it's called autism. I'm socially awkward, I have a dry sense of humor, I can be very sarcastic. My family will also agree that sometimes I bitch just to bitch, not because there's an actual problem or I'm actually upset, but I'm also very loving and will do anything I can to save people's lives. Grumpy autists. Watch beings from pain, and I know where he gets that from, having come from an abusive household myself. You can either continue the pattern or do everything you can not to repeat it, not to harm others. But of course, the Snape wives went a lot farther than just- Rashad says, is it wrong that this aesthetic of woman strikes fear into me? It's hot though, right? Kind of like some fear, but hot. See, she's a nice goth girl, though. This girl, this girl's not going to ruin your life. She's not the stereotype of the goth girl that ruins your life. This is the stereotype of the goth girl that is um, actually like a total bottom and very sweet. Also a lesbian. I feel like she's not going to ruin your life, but she might step on you with some boots. But she might feel bad about it. I feel like she's a not nice goth girl, you know? But the, the opposite trope of her, oh, she's going to smash your plants and your video games and ruin your life, maybe even stab you. But that's not her trope, right? So she's probably the best of both worlds, bro. She's probably going to step on you, but then, you know, cuddle you after.
sympathizing with this character. Um, and, and, you know, as, as fandom tends to do, uh, a lot of their characterization of... Fun story, a woman has stepped on me. I've been stepped on. It's a great feeling to be with big, gothy platform boots. Yo, some of my favorite scenes I have done you know, is being stepped on. It's a feeling being crushed under the weight of things. You know, sometimes I just like a little sternum rub. You ever rub your sternum? You ever get some knuckles and have your partner rub your sternum and then they make out with you at the same time? It's kind of a vibe. Snape was creative. You see, Snape has, Snape has literally said, and I quote, I despise annoying, giggling fangirls whom think they understand me as being cute, fluffy, funny. I only give audience to those women who are strong and able to withstand my fierce temper and do as I say. I coldly ignore those vain, simpering females that hold a thought like a leaky sieve. I can teach you how to feel, teach you how to think. That's right. Absolutely no cutesy flower crowns allowed. As you may be sensing <laughs> uh, from the the tone here at times. There is also an extremely sexual aspect to a lot of Snape Wives content. Of Yay! Course. Women are so horny. Autistic, hyper fixated women who like all this lore, they're horny as fuck, bro. You wanna, you know this like stereotype, like women never wanna have sex, they only wanna have sex like once a month? Yeah, that's because they're not autistic. Now, not all autists, the autists who are touched uh not indifferent that's different so there's the adhd autistic nerdy girls that literally want to have sex like five times a day and then there's the ones who don't but we're not talking about them we're talking about the very specific category of girls that write read smut write smut love smut they be fucking and i'm definitely not talking about it from a personal experience but i might be they just be fucking okay they might be fucking Another really amazing source for this video was the article Consider the Snape Wife by Ashley Reese. As a part of that article, she interviews Zoe Alderton, the, the author of the academic paper about Snape Wives. And in that interview, Alderton explains the sexual aspect of it just flawlessly. So I'm going to quote her. There was obviously some real resonance with the idea that he was just absolutely in charge and that he was an incredibly domineering, fearful force. I think there's a lot of people who feel sexually attracted to that, but also kind of socially attracted. P.S. to the person that mentioned True Blood in the chat, fuck the show, read the books. The books are better to it, like gathering around this amazing, domineering, real kind of alpha character, even though he's also brooding on the sidelines. I think people like that combination. She also said, I think a lot of women are socialized and brought up to feel like their role is a nurturer and that you're not central to your own story. You're the nurturer, you're the mom figure or the girlfriend figure. I think for a lot of women, that's where their minds go because that's been the narrative that's been given to them their whole lives. Those two quotes just sum it up perfectly, like I said, because that, that's very, that's exactly, that's their attitude. He's like this mean, domineering alpha and that's like sexy, but also he needs to be fixed and nurtured. We've seen this dynamic a million times. A million times. We've seen this is toxic on toxic. This is codependent toxic. The girls that want a guy who's a daddy they need to fix. And the guys who are like uh, toxic, like dominant boyfriends who want to be in charge, but also need to be like cuddled and nursed at night. Again, not speaking from experience, but it's not going to work out, girls. Fandom turn kind of broody boys into like dark sexual alphas with a past. We've, we've seen it a million times and we're still seeing it. Sometimes they even get it published. It's crazy. <laughs> so like, how did they possibly justify this, you know? I'm not going to play with you. She just showed 50, grades, 50 Shades of Grey on the screen. I'm not going to play with you. I took a boy to see 50 Shades of Grey once because I was doing a, a movie, a video review on it. And he literally was like, I kind of relate to Christian Grey. And I was like, even the boys hold the fantasy. The girls who hold the fantasy of getting with the brooding alpha boy who also needs to be nursed at night, okay? Those boys end up with girls who also allow them to be the brooding boy who wants to be alpha but needs to be nursed at night. The Christian Greys do end up with the Annas. The Snapes do end up with the girls. Like, they, that is a thing. That is a trope. And I'm just saying it doesn't work out because it's too codependent and it's rooted in trauma. And it's also rooted in this like, I can fix him. I need to be fixed narrative. Like the irony is it's okay. This obviously went way beyond normal accepted fandom behavior. Interestingly, the idea that the Harry Potter canon, the books and the movies were somehow flawed and, and J.K. Rowling was wrong to write them the way that they did, it was a pretty common perspective within the Harry Potter fandom. I mean, like, Ron and Hermione? Ew, what? But people were especially undignified about the treatment of Snape. 
No, I feel like Ron and Hermione made sense though. Saying that his redemption arc wasn't good enough. I mean, I mean, yeah, it was. It was bad. It was bad. It was barely a redemption arc. It wasn't well written. Like I understand why. If you had wanted so much more for that character and you had followed all of these books, hoping that he would get some kind of validation, like I understand why that would be very frustrating. A more extreme wing of fandom began to see Snape as something of an objective reality, with Rowling as a flawed scribe who does not quote unquote own him. On the whole, this does not manifest in the belief that Snape literally. I love the idea that people are trying to separate J.K. Rowling from Harry Potter. The cope is so funny. The cope is so funny to me. People that are like, we love Harry Potter, but we don't care about J.K. Rowling. Your cope is hilarious. I understand like separating the artist from the art, but don't you kind of like want, like I do love for people to suffer when the fandoms are too crazy. I just want to be like, yeah, you hate transphobes, right? Until they write your fucking sexual fiction character into real life. Oh yeah, everybody hates a transphobe until she makes your fucking smut. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're basically fucking J.K. Rowling. If you're into Snape, you're basically into J.K. Rowling. He didn't exist without her. So admit it. Y'all want to fuck J.K. Rowling, bruss. Gross. Really exists, but it can be seen as a logical precursor to this attitude. Snape wives really hated Rowling. <laughs> that was one, one single... The only singular way that they were ahead of their time. Apparently Rowling was meant to tell S Snape's story about his heroic defeat of Voldemort or whatever. So, <laughs> but then she, she went astray. Webkins, hold on, we're deviating, says off topic, but do you have any advice for dealing with people projecting onto you and saying your things you know you're not as an online content creator? Block the losers. Block the losers. Block them. Grown adults who have simple disagreements with you will have good conversations with you about it. Viewers, content creators that say shit about you that you know isn't true. Losers! Because who other than a loser would spread false information about people? Who other than a loser would literally do that? Don't associate with losers. Okay? And I don't like to deviate during topics, but for this, I will deviate. Losers. Okay? Losers. Block. Ban every comment. Block. Grown-ups who disagree with you, who simply have criticism, they will do it in a way that is good faith and good conversation will come out of it. Good conversation will come out of it. Look at the way I've disagreed with so many content creators on this platform. We make great content together. The ones who disagree with you but make bad content with you because they want to lie about you, block. Astray because she was, she was scared of Snape's true power. So she went astray and he abandoned her. The core components of the Harry Potter story, the, the basic components and the world that it's set in, are real, but the books are still mostly just garbage muddled by J.K. Rowling's bad opinions and preferential treatment of Harry. There are many descriptions in the Harry Potter books of Snape being ugly and greasy and gross and... Ugly, greasy, and gross is literally the trope that girls go for because they think, I'll just give him a shower. I'll just nurse him at night, he'll be better. I'll just feed him. I'll just shampoo his hair. The creepy, gross, greasy goth boy some of your ladies are volunteering to fuck him. Snape Wives would call that the Harry filter. Everything is filtered through Harry's wrong, bad, invalid opinion. As I'm sure you can imagine, the Snape Wives were very cut off from the rest of the Harry Potter fandom. You, you can't just roll up to a normal Harry Potter discussion forum and start going on about how obviously Snape didn't die in the books because actually he's an immortal deity, not unlike the Christian god who possessed J.K. Rowling to tell his story, but then she betrayed him slash was inadequate and wrong, so he abandoned her and now he communicates with a community of middle-aged women on LiveJournal instead Naturally, the, the biggest glaring problem with the books for a lot of the Snape wives was- I'm gonna be real. She kind of reminds me of one of my siblings. Obviously, my sister. I don't know why I said that. Like, it wouldn't be obvious. But at the same time, I can't follow her conversation. I can't follow her content. Why can't I follow this girl's content? I've come across her content before and I never got into it. And now I'm trying to figure out my own brain. See how we watch people to understand ourselves? She's beautiful, great set, great microphone, interesting topic. Why can I not follow what she's saying? I mean, I'm following it, but I don't get it. Like I'm not grasping on to the point of the video. See, I think it's because I need to know what the point of the video is. Oh, the story of the Snape wives. Okay, hold on. So I'm listening to the origin story of how things happened in chronological order. Is that what we're doing? Okay, so my brain is processing. So she's not talking about the community. 
She's telling us the story about the community. Okay, let me re-listen again, but thinking of it as a story. Because I didn't think of it as a story, but now this is like a story. Okay, she's just giving all the background. Okay. K.O. says, I need more info on screen. I would love more info on screen. Vibrancy says, it's just informative. It's not informative enough. No, I feel like there's not, a, I'm not getting enough information. I feel like she needs to throw like 20 more facts at me. You know what I mean? Okay, let's see. Snape's death in the last book. Obviously this can't be correct because he's an immortal god who can't die. And yet a lot of the Snape wives actually did mourn him after this and create tributes to him. I mean, he was still okay. a god who okay. could die. To Conrad with a super chat says, I heard a great set and looked at the chest. I am too thirsty today, respectfully. I heard great set and looked at the chest. I am too thirsty today, respectfully. I heard great set. Are you talking about boobs? Whose boobs? My boobs? Whose boobs? Who are you talking about? Conrad, thanks for the super chat. I don't understand. To them, but like maybe there was multiverses or, or different dimensions or something, and like maybe he did die in one dimension. Plus, anyway, the Deathly Hallows book takes place in 1998. So if he died in 1998, how could he be communicating with them in 2007? Is time even real? Tanya writes this fan fiction where the immortal god Snape takes her to the Deathly Hallows book universe, and then they like go to the grave of the Snape who died in that universe and like dig up his grave. The Snape wives clearly had a lot of emotions about Snape's death and, and they found their ways to engage with that and to vent those feelings regardless. Mm -hmm. How did this manage to go so far is another valid question. A lot of people have chalked that one up to live journal. When I was growing up and first starting to engage with fandom. Oh, Conrad said, I thought you said she had great boobs when you said she had a great set. Oh, I meant her background, like her set up. Conrad, <laughs> I get it now. I get it. Thank you for the super chat. As a teenager, fanfiction.net was where it was at. Now I, it's AO3 now. It's been AO3 for a long time. I come from the fanfiction.net generation. Before fanfiction.net, there was LiveJournal. That was where a lot of the fandom stuff, as well as some other Tumblr variety of stuff, tend, tended to be housed in the early 2000s. LiveJournal tended to create very insulated communities. I mean, it wasn't that difficult to join them. You could still get people creeping on each other, starting drama, et cetera, et cetera. But it wasn't like Tumblr where you post something in a tag and then suddenly your, your stuff is on blast to everyone who can look at that tag. The stuff could go on relatively privately on LiveJournal for a lot longer, which honestly just makes me wonder like what the hell could be going on in Discord servers these days. And now to get into some more of these specifics. What exactly is the lore here that we're dealing with within the Snape Wives religion? Alderton actually notes that the Snape Wives theology seems very, very consistent, well thought out, well understood by all of the members. They have a very clear idea of who Snape is, what he wants and represents as a god, as well as what counts as valid devotional practices. And Alderton describes those devotional practices as a combination of kind of established religious traditions, mostly drawing on Christianity, and some newly invented practices owing to the Snape Wives' background in fandom culture, as well as the new technology at their disposal the internet. The online space, the blog as a place of worship, is super interesting. Writing fan fiction, making fan art and edits and collages <laughs> as religious experiences. I'm so sorry, girl. I'm so sorry. Super interesting. Writing fan fiction, making fan art and edits. This is neurodivergency. I'm gonna be really honest with you. When I see grown people making romantic fan fiction, and putting themselves in the picture with the characters, I just assume you're very autistic or very neurodivergent. And it's actually an interesting conversation around whether or not people treat people with neurodivergency as children, but it's not really as children so much as there is a level of immaturity that has to exist in an adult in order to engage in this behavior. And look, we're all immature, okay? Like, I think everyone's immature or mature on a spectrum, but I do think it takes a very special level of immaturity to do this and be over the age of like 21. But also, I don't think there's anything morally wrong with it. I don't think you're a bad person. I personally would be very uncomfortable if I was married or dating somebody who had like, like hentai on the walls that wasn't like art, but was like, I'm into these or like certain kind of, I don't know, like like horny, weird fandom stuff. Like I'm not very, I don't like worshiping things. Like I don't like things that people that worship people. So I don't like fandoms because fandoms are just obsessed, you know? So this makes me so uncomfortable, right? Shadow B says, did you ever do that? No, I mean, I, you know, when I was a little girl, like when I was in high school, I read fan fiction of like maybe musical artists or maybe I kind of imagined what it would be like if like my chemical romance and I hung out, P.S. saw them live, they're great. 
maybe when I was like that, but you know, you grow out of it. Like you grow out of it. And then you read fiction and you're kind of like, oh, what if I was in that world with that fictional character? You know, I always joked that, oh, I, you know, I needed a type of person in a storybook and then like maybe I'd meet that. But I never, I, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying you're morally wrong. I'm saying it's just, I, I think there's something about it that makes me feel like, mm -mm. you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Um. Like, I think there's something that's wrong with them, but I don't know what it is. It feels like I can't trust them to adult a little bit, a little bit. Like a part of me, especially, well, to be fair, we're talking about a group of people that think they're married to Snape. So yeah, I wouldn't trust them with my kids. Like, I feel like I couldn't trust you to adult. So maybe it's not just the element of this. Maybe it's to the level it goes. Because if they're really crying, and I don't mean crying over a character. Guys, I cry over art all the time. Being moved by a piece of art is different than thinking you're married to the piece of art. So maybe it's the fact that they feel like they're married to the piece of art that makes me think, like, I can't trust you to adult. Like, I cannot trust you with a child. And I feel like if I can't trust you with an adult, or, like, with a baby, to take care of a baby, like, I, I don't know what's happening. You know what I mean? Again, I don't, I want to make sure I'm being very clear that I'm talking about a very specific group of people, a very specific category. Because, like, I love anime. It's funny to, like, you know, I don't know, make anime memes and, like, put yourself into the meme. Like, that shit's funny. If you're doing it for funny, it's funny. But if you think you're married to a fictional character or shifting into their reality, I feel like I can't give you a baby to take care of. You'll forget to feed it. So I think, I think that's the part that makes me uncomfortable. You know what I mean? <gasps> Chaos is still not as bad as the Ford. 45-year-old Timothy Chalamet stands on Reddit who are wishing death upon him for dating Kylie Jenner. Insane. Absolutely insane. Grown women obsessed with K-pop artists. Insane. And I mean obsessed. Like, if you're being weird, you're obsessed. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think there's just, like, a level of adulting that I expect people to do. And I'm not saying they can't do it. I'm just saying, like, I doubt you can do it. And I'm happy to be proven wrong. But, like, K-pop stands, you need to get your shit together. Obsessed pe fans, fanatics, y'all need to get your shit together. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not that you're a fan. It's that you're a fanatic. And it shows. It's in collages. As girl, Discord says, girl, Timothy is not a K-pop artist. Do you really think I, why would I think Timothy is a K-pop artist? That's not what I said, girl. Discord, you'd be crazy. You've been listening to me wrong. Obviously, I know who Timothy, whatever his name is. I, oh, my God. Why did you guys think I said that? Guys, I'm not saying Timothy is a K-pop artist. I'm saying Timothy, period. Also, K-pop artists. Different things. I guess two of you misunderstood me. So, fine. I must have said it wrong. But, obviously, I know one is the guy from Dune. And one is Asian. <laughs> Hello? Place of worship is super interesting. Writing fan fiction, making fan art and edits and collages as religious experiences. Images especially were extremely central, as I'm sure maybe you could have gathered from Rose's very impressive repertoire of images. Everything Snape related is holy. Every every image of him is a religious object with some kind of connection to him. Rose's house apparently had a whole room dedicated to like Snape posters and pictures, kind of like a shrine. There's this instance where she is like- See, that's what I mean. If I walk into your home and you have a dedicated shrine, Red flag, red flag, red flag. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not into that. You know, if you have like a dedication, you're like, I worship this character. Like, I can't function because of this character. If I take away this shrine from you, are you going to freak out and collapse? She feels that she is physically shoved to her knees by the spirit of Snape while in that room. Any See? representation of Snape is seen to be a point of contact to him. For example, Rose becomes infuriated over the treatment of a highly realistic Tonner brand Snape doll. She was appalled after the reading of Snape's teenage humiliations in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix 2003. Fans would deem it appropriate to check under his clothes to see if he had knickers on and take pics of his naked rump on the internet. She states, I wouldn't ever dare disrespect Master in such a humiliating manner. And that's all fine and good. However, it leaves me with the very pressing question, Aren't these images of Alan Rickman, though? <laughs> the actor oh, rip. Maiden says, obsession over a human is usually limerence and stems from a lack of self-concept, probably rooted in trauma, for sure. So obviously my heart goes out to them.
Like, obviously my heart goes out to them. And that's what I'm saying. Like, this is like, this is mental illness to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Played Snape in the movies. It's one thing to do fan art of a book character, but like, this is a picture of a real guy who... Great point, girly. Great fucking point. Exists. Well, he died. Existed. Oh. And it was not... <laughs> Snape. <laughs> Or is it the idea of Snape that matters more? I've seen no justification for this, but they're very obsessed with the image of Snape. And that image is Alan Rickman. Another very important facet of Snapeism was channeling the spirit of Snape. Rose and Tanya both claim to very frequently channel Snape in their day-to-day -day lives. Other members struggled with their lack of direct connection to him. One particularly vocal member, who the Alderton article also follows in some detail, is a member from Holland named Conchita. She has a handful of vivid dreams about Snape and can feel his presence, but he never quite seems to directly communicate on the level that he does to Rose and Tanya, and that's something that she's made to feel quite insecure about. Rose and Tanya also claim that all of their fan creations are inspired by the spirit of Snape, much like the Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Only this time we're talking about Snape erotica, whereas Ooh. Conchita engages in that sort of fan creation to feel closer to the spirit of Snape. Some women also try and communicate with him in more, I guess, established occulty sort of ways, lighting candles for him, or even trying to communicate with him via Ouija board. What's clear is that Snape communicates with his wives unequally. So why are some chosen and others not? Rose and Tanya take it upon themselves to imply that maybe some of the other Snape wives like Conchita just aren't, their, their hearts aren't as pure. They're, they're, maybe they're not good enough for Snape. Oh. Tanya especially is like the Regina George of the Snape wives. Oh. She is by far the top bitch when it comes to- This is why I don't want to hang out in your communities. Even in the mentally ill Snape wives bubble, there's a hierarchy. There's a Regina George. This is why I don't want to hang out in your bubbles. You literally think there's a hierarchy to this? You think Snape likes you the best? Girl to channeling the spirit of Snape. By far the most talented is Tanya. In a self-insert fanfiction, Snape announces that she is, quote-unquote, the vessel, and that he prefers to write to his wives through her. When starting a new blog, Tanya announced, Severus Snape himself may speak here. This is his journal as well. She requests that people only follow this blog if they believe that Severus is a spirit and have a very open mind. Mm, and Yippie says, like, I don't know, isn't that, like, pretty normal in the neurodivergent community, having comfort characters and coping through them? I think you're supposed to grow out of that. Or you're supposed to heal out of that, or you're supposed to look at it less obsessively. Like, yes, I think some of the most unhealthy neurodivergent people I know have a hyper focus and obsession in a way that displays in unhealthy ways or healthy ways. Like, sometimes I see it in people and it's fine because they understand it's inappropriate, but also I think about it like this. As a YouTuber, if you had an obsession with me and I was your neurodivergent hyperfocus, you would be dangerous to me. So there is a level to which your comfort, if you ever interacted with the real person, just makes you dangerous. So the question is, is my comfort thing becoming something where I'm dangerous to somebody else or to myself or to both? Because a lot of what I see is sort of like a danger. There's like a negative repercussion or they're fine and they're not hurting anybody, but are they even hurting themselves? Because a cope is not good. A cope is helpful, but a cope is neutral. It's meant to keep you alive or stable until you can get to a better place. So you don't want to have a cope the whole, like in my opinion, you don't want, you don't want to cope your whole life. You want to use copes as band-aids for temporary moments until you get something better for a real fix. So I feel like, I, I'm not sure. Bryson says this is deaf beyond a comfort character. Yeah, I'm also not sure about that. But also, I mean, I'm not sure what's, is there a spectrum of comfort characters? Like, look, I used to, like, I mean, I feel so connected to some of the characters I would read, so connected to the characters I would watch. I mean, I literally cry and I'm, I did notice myself slowly growing out of a deep, strong attachment to fictional characters, uh, uh, basically about the age I graduated high school. I felt a significant shift in my brain and in my body where my obsession with those things changed because I started to have a life. I was socializing. I was fucking. I was dating. I was working. I was working and reading, but I was throwing myself into my life so from my personal lived experience, I noticed a complete shift in my life where I went from like my whole life was listening to like music that I associated with stories I would read and then becoming obsessed with these characters because they were my whole life. They were my escapism. So I don't know for myself 
and this is just speaking for myself, is that I eventually grew out of focusing my life around fiction and my life became my focus. Like I live my life. Now, I do think that when I see people focusing on the fiction and they make it their life and it comes out like this, I, I would say that that is probably further from your joy than closer to it. But I think a lot of people do that, right? With lots of different things, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, <gasps> you have a fuzz on your hair on the left side. Me? Are you seeing my rubber bands? Do I? I don't see fuzz. Guys, help me. I don't see fuzz. Are you sure? I don't see it. Is it my my rubber bands? I don't see it. In regards to her online channeling, Tanya specifies it is never roleplay. She also states that she has no control over Snape or when he might choose to appear. Tanya's oh, ability to channel has allowed her to- Mental health. This is mental health. She just said it's not roleplay. Introduce new codes of conduct and beliefs into the group. Through Tanya, Snape declares, I can teach you how to feel, teach you how to think. To submit to him is to accept this channeled wisdom. Tanya also engaged in extensive sexting with the other Snape wives while channeling the spirit of Snape. Most often, the, the sexting while channeling Snape was with her IRL bestie, Rose. And I'm just reading this for the first time in, a, in an academic paper of all places, but I'm reading this for the first time and I'm just like... I'm breathing so deeply because this is just not a storyline that I ever expected mm. to have to hear twice. Mm. Truly nothing in all of human history is original. Or Tanya is the reincarnation of Benedetta Carlini. Take your pick. Uh, maybe the biggest difference between Snape wives and medieval Christian mystics is that while the Catholic Church gave their stamp of approval and made Hildegard of being a saint, the Harry Potter fandom dismissed the, sa dismissed, the Harry Potter fandom dismissed the Snape wives as insane. But even so, the Snape wives did not let all of the hate get to them. Sage says, well, therapists do say it's good to listen uh, to things from our teen years because it can help be soothing for us. So I like to go back to those things that brought me joy as a kid. I think that's fine. I mean, I'm wearing a Sailor Moon shirt for fuck's sake. I was watching Sailor Moon when I was six years old till, I mean, I was an adult. Like, obviously, I don't mind expressing some level of what I call immaturity or going back to my youth. I mean, I'm literally wearing a Sailor Moon shirt. So I have, no, and did I identify very hard with like the Sailor Scouts and Sailor Jupiter and like all of the lesbianness of that show? Yes. Did I throw myself in those like fantasies? Did I masturbate to Diamond basically almost raping Serena? Yes. <laughs> that's not funny, but that's basically what he did. It was, uh, I, in my head, it was CNC in my defense. But yes, I had all those things as a young person. And I'm not even opposed to you incorporating some like role play into your adulthood. You know what I mean? I just think, yeah, the difference here is these people are claiming it's like the real Snape. So there is no awareness that they're like engaging in something fantasy. You know, that's the problem. I think that's the problem. You know? Especially when their god was such an important presence. In Let's go. Purple with the super chat says you were right. They be fucking. You know what I'm saying? In their day-to-day -day lives. Through feeling his presence, Conchita was able to determine that he dislikes the sweetness of Sinterklaas candy, but enjoyed a steak that she cooked one time in 2006. Just that one. RIP to every other steak she ever cooked, I guess. For Thanksgiving, Snape helps Rose to thaw and tenderize her turkey and gives Tanya inspiration with seasoning. His knowledge of potions comes in handy. Snape heals Tanya from digestive pain in her stomach by giving her a potion containing ginger. Though Snape can be an exacting master, he demanded that Tanya give him a list of every food in her house containing fiber when she had digestive problems. If they saw like a cloud or a piece of string make an S shape, that was a sign somehow of something. They just kind of attributed mm. everything in their lives, every feeling they had or thing they noticed to some kind of a sign from Snape. If it's a good thing, it's a blessing from Snape. If it's a bad thing, P.S. I do not like the remakes of Sailor Moon that I've seen so far. I only like the original, but at the same time, I understand everyone has a different relationship with the story. I just want to say that because I'm sharing Sailor Moon gifts in the Discord. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Kunman, Kun, Kunum, Kunum, Kunum says, how do you feel about moms dressing their kids in modern minimalist clothing rather than graphic kid tees? I don't care. I think parents have children to dress them up like dolls slash raise them to be mini versions of them. And then they eventually grow up and rebel against their parents or not. I think at the end of the day, as long as you're doing good by your kid, it's fine. But I also think that often people have kids just to use them as props, which I don't think is good. But honestly, like I, as long as your kids have food, water, and shelter, damn, and hug your kids, you know, it's, 
I don't know. I don't care if the kids wear graphic tees. I don't care if the kids wear minimalist clothes. I don't care as long as the kids got food, water, shelter, and they're loved. As long as you're not abusing your kids, I don't give a fuck, bro. Thing. You better watch out. You must have done something wrong. A member of your family that you hate dies? Thanks, Snape. That is unfortunately a real example. Also, uh, he can control the weather. Yeah. Uh, he cured Tanya of her fear of spiders. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Although they did have quite consistent and well-developed theology, there were a few discourses that the Snape wives community kept coming back to, which, which eventually would be central to their downfall. The first one being, why are some women chosen to have visions and others not? Like I said, they could be a little bit trad wifey. They cared a lot about feminine virtues and physical attractiveness. So when it came to some women apparently being chosen by Snape over others, things could get a little judgmental. Like I said, Conchita is struggling to have visions. There's nothing worse than being judged by a bitch who thinks she's having a sexual romantic or somehow spiritual relationship with a fictional character that came from a transphobe's brain. Damn, bruh. Imagine being bullied by a person. Imagine being literally bullied by a bitch. And we mean bitch like in the gay way. Okay, bitch. Who literally is like, I'm better than you. Because a transphobe's fictional character likes me better than he likes you. <sighs> Mental health is so fucking real, bro. This was a source of tension between her and poster child members like Tanya and Rose from the very beginning. Because obviously, if a woman was not receiving these passionate communications from her god, it was, it was because something about her was inadequate. Was she not beautiful enough? Was she too much of an independent modern woman? Not submissive enough? One suggestion was apparently that someone's pajamas were not sexy enough to attract Snape into their dreams. Anyway, there was just, there was a lot of body shaming and a lot of judgment about what kind of a woman you were and just ugh, trad wifey icky things, you know? The second common point of discourse was erotica. Snape wives obviously obviously wrote just hundreds of thousands of words of fanfiction. Often self-insert fanfictions, getting into their personal relationships with Snape. The debate that- Okay, Yippie says to me using characters to explore ideas is a tool and some people just abuse the tool and get lost in it. Guys, that's what I'm saying. You know in Normie land, in college, in university, you use fictional characters to discuss philosophy and politics and life. Using fictional characters to explore yourself has always been a universal tool. It's why the world has told stories forever. This is not a new tool. Every civilization has used storytelling to explain parables and life lessons and all of these things. Just, it's, it's when you take, this is not the same. This isn't even taking something that's normal and taking it too far. It's like its own beast almost. It is perfectly normal within every society, neurotypical, neurodivergent, religious, secular, to use fiction to understand the self. Jordan Peterson is literally always going off on Dostoevsky or whatever his name is. You know, he's always using fiction. I mean, his whole lecture series is on fiction to teach us how to be better versions of ourselves. The Bible is literally a bunch of stories to teach us how to be better about ourselves. Like, human beings love stories, bro. The question is, why do some humans, spoiler, it's mental health, why do some humans literally become obsessed with characters to the point where they lose themselves to, in, like, to a fictional reality from real reality? And it's not just like religious people. Some religious people are crazy. Lots of religious people just have strong faith. You know what I mean? It's very different. So like when I hear stories like this, I'm like, okay, what is it? Now, in some cases, I do think, I've met a few women with autism, but they're on the very severe high need spectrum. They do live in their stories and I do think they should stay there because I don't know what a better way for them to exist is. But the problem is like they already have high care needs. They already need so much care and attention that having them get lost in fiction is probably a good place for them to feel found. But I think if you're on that, area of the spectrum it's one thing to be like that's the best place for them but if you, that's what I'm saying either your disability has to either be helped by actually being sort of like more disabled or helped by being less disabled does that kind of make sense I'm using the wrong words here but I kind of feel like there's a line there's a spectrum there's the question of is the thing you have the reason you actually are going to need all of the support or the thing you have going to be not like hard, but not the thing that's keeping you from functioning. Do you get what I'm using words wrong? Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like, 
either it's good because that's the best or it's bad because you could be doing better. Do you get what I'm saying? There's just a part in which you're, man, I'm going to piss off everybody right now. Maiden says feedback loops. I think the answer is feedback loops. Maybe? Yeah, maybe. I just feel like, I don't know. I'll think about how to word this. Though was how graphic the erotica was allowed to get before crossing the line into disrespectful. Tanya and Rose were on the side of absolutely not a single thing held back, just the raunchiest, craziest, most problematic Snape porn you've ever heard in your life. Conchita was one of the members who disagreed with that approach. As for Conchita, she is adamant that Snape is not a dom in a sadomasochistic relationship with his wives, and is disgusted by Dark Desires, which is the name of one of Rose's fanfictions, which she thinks misrepresents Snape and shows that Rose cannot possibly love him. Yes, Bayleaf. Bayleaf said, yeah, either this is all they can hope for in life to be, is to find meaning this way, or it's what's holding you back from your full potential. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Bayleaf. Exactly. It's either this is holding you back or this is the best. Because, like, I want to give you the best life possible. And the question is, what does that look like? Because I think a lot of people settle and cope and think this is the best I can have, but it's not. And then some people look at people who have a really great life and want to take them away from it because they want to project some sort of greatness onto them that was never meant for them as well. Respect him. The final big point of discourse was the polygamy of it all. Within this religion, Snape, of course, had many wives. The Ooh. question was, does that ability to have multiple partners also extend to the wives? I mean, compared to every other religion that employs polygamy, that's shockingly woke, but <laughs> let's not give them any credit, okay? The commonly accepted solution to this problem, as proposed by Tanya and Rose, who, of course, already were some of the members who already had husbands, was that Snape was fine with them having a husband or a boyfriend. Whoa, these people were in relationships? Okay, if I hear one more person complain about being single, if I hear one more man say no woman will pick me, these women have a fictional sexual relationship with Snape and they got boyfriends and husbands. who they were monogamous with. Snape wives were allowed to have one human man. Snape would tolerate sharing them with one singular human man. In fact, Rose claimed to be able to have sex with Snape through her husband. Snape Ooh. would possess her husband and- Oh! You know what? Let me just read the passage for you. The physical bodies of these husbands do have benefits. Rose is also able to have sex with Snape via her husband. She proudly explains, Master would take over for my hubby and have fun. Basically, my hubby would do things in ways that only Master can and could weird emoticon faces. Nevertheless, Snape only uses his body as a vessel. He does not spiritually connect either to Kevin, Rose's husband, or George, Tanya's husband, nor does he even seem to like them. As Tanya recounts, my husband offended him by saying he was not real. George is not invited to be part of her sexual adventures with Snape. In one channeling session, she pauses her activities when he wakes up from a nap and does not resume her erotic dancing for Snape until he leaves for a walk. According to comments left by Tanya on Rose's journal, George is awaiting the moment when Severus is gone from my life forever. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Poor George. Right. So Snape wives are allowed to have a husband or boyfriend. Got it. But what's really interesting is that they are not allowed to have an interest in any other fictional men or have crushes, which is something that even the poster child members struggle with. Rose has interests in other fictional men. Tanya struggles specifically with attraction to Alan Rickman, independently of Snape. Once again, Conchita is the one to throw a curveball. Bryson says, why does this give me anxiety? Oh, the way I am anxious. The way my discord, the way we are all, bro, there's so much anxiety in my body right now. And look, as long as they're not hurting anyone, right? Like genuinely, I don't want you to hurt yourself either, but let's, you know what I mean? Man, this is, woo. this is, woo. Oh, she believes that even a husband or boyfriend is, is too far. She wants to be completely celibate, except for Snape, completely 100% devoted to only Severus Snape. And when she's yeah. in a bad mood or annoyed with her fellow wives, she'll go as far as to say that polygamy is wrong, that she isn't a polygamist and neither is Snape. I am Severus's woman, so I will not be with other men. Being with Severus is satisfying enough. Why would I ever need another man? I just know that Severus is not a polygamist and neither is he a dom. Severus Snape is a man unique. So she very much still is worshiping Snape as a god, but by saying that he isn't a polygamist, she's calling into question like the entire teachings of Snape under Rose and Tanya. That's like, they all marry Snape. They're the Snape wives, they all marry Snape. That's like the whole point, that's the whole thing. And she's calling it all into question, <gasps> the drama. After these kind of fights, Conchita would receive admonishments and threats from Snape for doubting him, channeled by Tanya, of course. And a few times she apologized and came back to the community, but 
She eventually just committed to becoming their nemesis, started her own website, warning against the false teachings of Tanya. Vegeta <laughs> exclaims, his words do mean a lot to me, not your made up oh fantasy stories. She believes that Tanya's Snape channeling live journal is a forgery that makes the real Snape cringe of irritation. Much like Snape was the greasy, bullied lo I love that, bro. I love it when groups, cr I love when bubbles, oh, this is so beautiful. This is like a religion, but different. It's like when groups get together, they're like, this is the real thing. And then someone's like, I don't think that's the real thing. I think this is the real thing. And I'm like, how about this? None of you have the real thing. But you do you, kids. You do you. Damn. They really just making subcultures, different denominations. They're like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Martin Luther who? Mm-mm. Owner kid type of the Harry Potter universe. Snape fans were a very popular target for bullying within the Harry Potter fandom. Communities dedicated to mocking Snape fans existed on LiveJournal, on this ripoff site called JournalFen, and when it eventually came onto the scene, there were even Tumblr tags dedicated to that purpose. But the main community responsible for making Snape wives known to the internet was this JournalFen community called Fandom Wank. It was dedicated to documenting and making fun of all kinds of fandom drama, fandom cringe, as we would say now, not necessarily Harry Potter fandom specific, but any kinds of fandom cringe. The existence of Fandom Wank reflected this need to almost protect the image of normal fans to draw a line between people who like oh colleen says these little internet groups are wild okay i know this is probably not what you meant but it made me boop it like boop i know for a fact i knew who these people were growing up before the internet and i know you guys know too so yes they're on the internet but i could tell you okay oh hold on my obs pooped out hold on in my hair 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 obs reconnect obs reconnect OBS reconnecting, OBS is coming back, OBS, OBS, OBS. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're back. Okay. So in real life, I feel like we knew who these people were growing up. And growing up, those were the people that we didn't associate with or didn't talk to or were the nerdy people that like, mm, like, no. Okay but they are the extremes of the little, little bubbles that like get pushed into a corner, but then they do form communities. They do have partners. They do have clubs. They do have ecosystems. And so I think about those bubbles growing up, like who were the kids that I knew as much as I wanted to get along with them, I couldn't because they were too much in this bubble. They, I know I can see them in my head. Like I knew which ones they were. Like I was weird. I was like a little theater kid. I was homeschooled and then I went to public school. I was like in the gay club. I made the first GSA on my campus with my friends. Like we were weird, but we weren't weird like those other kids were weird. And we weren't weird like some other kids were weird. Like we certainly weren't the normie kids, but we also knew how to talk to normie kids. Even though the normie kids were like, you're kind of weird, but I kind of don't mind you. It's like, okay, but then there's these other people. These people did exist without the internet. And I think a lot of them were sort of in libraries or in other places. But I think that's what's also interesting is like they always existed. They always existed, right? It's not like the, the genre just existed because of the internet. It's just the internet now has us interacting with them to some extent or watching them or observing them. You know, it's kind of interesting. Like, I'm not even mad about it. I, again, I don't want you to hurt yourself. But at the same time, like, as long as you're not hurting other people. Yeah. Kaylin says that kid that Naruto runs home when he gets off the bus. Honestly, vibe. sometimes I Naruto run here. I just start running, hands behind my back. But yeah, like, there's those kids. You're like, I see you. I see you. It's why, you know, somebody... um. I said, uh, we're all autistic here. Like everyone's autistic. You know how I talk sometimes to you guys? Sometimes people who don't watch me come in and see my videos are like, I did not appreciate that you said everyone is autistic. Or I did not appreciate that you said this. I do not get this. And they assume I'm saying something that I'm not saying because like they've never, they think this content is like for them, but then they don't understand. Like you're not, you can't sit with us. We were pink on Wednesdays and like you don't own a pink shirt. You know, it's kind of interesting, I think when you realize like people are looking at you and they're like, what are you doing? But we're all doing that to each other. Like I'm looking at these women. And I'm like, what are you doing? The truth is like, it's not my business what you're doing. If you want to fuck the spirit of Snape, none of my business, but also you can't babysit my kids. And we probably wouldn't want you to be president, but also like, liked things normally and people who like things too much. It functioned as a sort of 
social policing within the early internet fandom scene because that was that was where they decided what was normal and, and you didn't want to be outside of the realm of normal because then you might become a subject of mockery next. Mostly what they did on there in regards to Snape Wives was just repost their posts and laugh at them, but sometimes they would joke about doing more than that. A lot of the Snape Wives were open about being older women who were married and had kids, so a popular thing that people said was that they were going to call child protective services on them, because of course they did, because it's the internet. When talking about the online hate and criticism that they got, we have to ask the question. How much of that was kind of just rooted in misogyny? Because 2000s society absolutely loved to demean female fans who crossed the line into liking things too much, into abnormal fandom behavior. A lot of the time that was teenage girls, we see that with the examples of like Twilight and boy band fandoms, but I would argue that fandoms that are perceived to be like weird middle-aged women, I would say they might be hated even more than teenage girls. I mean, as they should be. I said what I said. As they should be. I said what I said. You know what I mean? I look, I was a Twilight reader. I read them. Oh, um, I read them before they were even popular. When I was reading Twilight, everybody was making fun of me for it. And then their moms were all watching the movies and reading the books after. Yeah, that's the kind of 15 year old I was. And you know what? You know what? Kind of cringe that your middle aged moms were thirsting after a teenage boy on the movie Twilight. Kind of fucking cringe. Okay. Kind of fucking cringe. That middle-aged women made Fifty Shades of Grey go viral. Kind of cringe. Y'all need to go to fucking therapy. And why is that? Do we, do we critique fandom culture that is masculine on the same level? A very popular comparison when it comes to Snape Wives has been sports fans. Do we judge men who run around streaking or start riots yes. or commit acts yes. of violence because of yes. sports yes. on the same level that we yes. do women who write? No, but on the same level is unfair. Because genuinely women are too busy masturbating to Snape to make fun of boys who are in sports. But yes, I make fun of sports culture all the time because I'm gay. Snape erotica? First of all, speak for yourself. I judge them. I think they're way worse. I'd party with a Snape wife before any sports bro. But speaking about we as- See, I don't want to be with sports bros or Snape wives. I'd rather be a hermit. The society or whatever. For some crazy reason, we just don't like women being passionate about things. Like, remember when Fifty Shades of Grey came out and everyone was just like, ew, gross, that book is only for like weird, lonely, middle-aged women. That was the same kind of tone that, that, that Snape wives were met with a lot of the time. Like, literally, so what? Literally, so what? The women are horny, boo-hoo for you. Like, you ignored that women have desires for the longest time. Listen, ultimately, I think it's a sign and it's a part of the meaning crisis. And I do think it's probably not good for the spirit or soul that men are getting so violent at sports events, they're hitting and killing people for having a different opinion on like sports teams. I think it's so fucking toxic. And I do think it's fucking toxic that women are doing these things. That argument of like, well, men do it, women do it. Yeah, that has a contextual like appropriateness. Like there's a contextual appropriateness to it for sure where I'm fine to have that conversation. But generally like bad is bad, bad is bad in my opinion, but those are subjective. I don't mind that you like things, but if you like things enough to hurt another person, if you like things enough to destroy someone's life, whether it's your religion or your hobbies or Snape or sports, you loving something doesn't give you justification for targeting someone else and destroying their life over it. I don't care if you're religious and believe in God. It is not a justification to be a transphobe or slash hurt someone because of your transphobia. I don't care if you love Snape, you can't murder your best friend because she fucked him twice behind your back. I don't care if you love sports teams, you can't beat up a guy who's wearing the opposite cap of you. Okay? So, yes. There's a reason we should be cautious around fanatics. Because some of them will stalk and kill you like Christina Grimmie's killer. Christina Grimmie's killer was a fan who wrote her love letters over and over again. With peace and love, your obsession over movie stars and celebrities is the reason a lot of them go to bed scared at night. So yeah, I kind of think we should judge. A little bit. And still ignore older women for the most part or present them as like sexless mother figures or quirky cat ladies. Okay, guys, Edward cannot be a pedo. None of you know what pedophilia is. Edward wasn't a pedophile. He was a man. That's a joke. <laughs> He's not a pedophile, though. Pedophile is prepubescent. Bella was in high school. He literally, by definition, can't be a pedophile. You guys fucking suck with words.
these in the media. Is it really that shocking that given the opportunity these women want to create their own sexual narratives, even if those narratives do draw on stereotypes which themselves might be rooted in some misogyny, okay, they're trying their best, they're bored in their marriages, they feel overlooked by their husbands, so why not embrace a little sexy bad boy fantasy? If your husband doesn't think you're hot anymore, maybe sever a Snape will on the astral plane. And who is that really harming? Besides Tanya's husband, George. <laughs> okay, oh. no, that's that's where it ends. This You thought for a second. No, this video is not about to devolve into a defense of Snape wives. Uh, very much not. Most of the online criticism of them was just bullying and misogynistic garbage. That is true. But just because the average fandom wank user was too brain dead to pick up on them, it doesn't mean there were not valid criticisms to be made. Let's focus in for a second on one of the articles I mentioned. Consider the Snape wife by Ashley Reese. <sighs> I really enjoyed reading it because she offers a perspective that I don't have as someone who was in the trenches back then, getting into a lot of discourse with Snape wives and other very passionate Snape fans. She and a friend- No, he can't be a hebophile either. She was a necrophiliac. My neurodivergency for appropriate wording is gonna come in right now. There is no technical term. He's just into her regardless of her age. You guys, the titles only represent some sort of representation of a certain pathology. A lot of guys are just into the person regardless of what age they are, which is very different than someone who targets or is interested in a specific classification. You know? <laughs> Caitlin says, Bella was so mature and cultured, though. Based. Based, Caitlin. Look, ultimately, that age gap shit is cringe, but that's why it has to stay in fiction. Do you know what I love about fiction? I love that fiction allows us an opportunity to know versions of ourselves by playing with different ideas. I'm not mad that we're reading about 500-year-old vampires who are into teenagers because that story isn't about the vampire. It's supposed to be about us. When you're a young person and you're reading a novel and you're reading whatever it is, I've read like so many vampire books in my whole life, you're not reading the story from the description of the vampire. You're reading it for the fantasy of the person who wants to look for somebody who's interesting and worldly and adventurous. It's why we all have daddy issues and we read these vampire books. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to grow out of this eventually, right? When you read these stories, they're not about the older person. That's why a woman wrote the books because she's talking about herself, right? I love fiction and I love vampire fiction because it helped me navigate so much of my own desires as a young person. Like, what do I really want? Do I want a partner that's 500 years older than me and knows all these things? Or no, do I want a partner who's my equal and we do things and learn things together? Because that's really the narrative that's interesting, I think, and it brings a lot of questions into play about our own mortality and the things that we uh, think we know about. Like, okay, in Twilight, why would you still be going to high school? Think about it. Why would vampires even still need to go to high school? Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody would give a fuck if they said they were homeschooling. They could have just homeschooled their kids. Nobody would have thought about anything. Don't you love how, what's her name, Stephanie Meyer, had to create a whole narrative that, oh, people would get suspicious if they weren't in high school? Can you imagine being immortal and still have to go to high school? Can you imagine being immortal and still not knowing how to get around paying taxes? Could you imagine being immortal and living for hundreds of years and not knowing? Guys, you know what I mean? It's kind of funny. Now, if you read like Laurel K. Hamilton, her vampires and werewolves are integrated into the world, so they're integrated into the legal system, right? So it is kind of funny, but ultimately fiction should be a tool for the reader to learn more about themselves, not for the reader to take it literally or ruin the relationship they're having with them with like reality, right? So. Who thinks True Blood is better? I highly recommend the books over the show. The show is cringe. I couldn't watch it. But the books are really good. And I do recommend them. Uh, but I also recommend adult fiction more like than the teen fiction. I recommend um, Suki. That's, you know, Suki Stack, 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 Stack House. I recommend those books, the True Blood series. I recommend Laurel K. Hamilton. I, re I recommend Kelly Armstrong. I recommend books about adults living adult lives and happen to be like also vampires and werewolves. The teen stuff is cute and everything, but the best ones are the adult ones, in my opinion. And who she also talks to a bit in the article, who are both women of color, dedicated a lot of time in the 2000s to fighting with Snape fans online because they found that the implications of defending him against all costs could, could quite quickly get sinister. That people who did could easily be pushed to defending sexism and racism. Which, by the way, 
are not fictional. This is unfortunately going to lead to me having to explain some of the plot of Harry Potter, but I will make it as fast as possible, I promise. Voldemort and the Death Eaters, where his followers are like a very clear, like wizard Nazi allegory sort of thing. They want to purge the wizarding world of everyone who isn't a pure-blooded wizard. They want to get rid of wizards born to non-wizard parents. Snape's only friend growing up is Lily. He's in love with her in like the tragic, unrequited, incel-y sort of way. She is also a wizard born to non-wizard parents. Snape and Lily go to Hogwarts together, where Snape ends up being relentlessly bullied by James, who is like the cool Chad to Snape's greasy incel. Lily and James are Harry Potter's parents. They start dating in high school, which you can imagine feels great to Snape. So he calls Lily a slur and then joins up with the wizard Nazis. Great okay. character arc there, Severus. The Snape wives and similar very passionate Snape fans don't like Lily. They do not like her as a character for her betrayal of Snape in dating and eventually marrying his bully. Ashley Reese writes, in retrospect, these debates over Lily and Snape were quasi debates about race and gender. It always seems as if their dislike of Lily stemmed from this idea that if they were in her shoes, they would have treated Snape with care, the nurturing he deserved. This reimagining of Lily as a more empathetic young woman has been a frequent theme in fan fiction, as well as suggesting that Lily's change of heart could have saved Snape from himself. So essentially, the choices and perspectives of a marginalized woman should have been sidelined in favor of coddling some man's ego. At no point was it on him to be the one with a little more empathy and um, not become a Nazi over high school drama. She should have been super cool with being called slurs and been supportive and loyal to him, again, the, the more important man in this equation against all odds. Amazing, great, great point to argue, guys. Love that, yeah. love that. The 2010s gave us incels Gamergate and a close-up look at how young men are radicalized by online right-wing extremism. Because of this, the excuses these fans made for Snape's callousness and attraction to radicalism have aged poorly. You don't fucking say. <laughs> Maybe it was much easier to empathize, even excuse Snape's behavior and his seduction to the dark in the 2000s when the trope of the monstrous jock and vicious it girls reigned supreme. But fandom has changed significantly in the last decade, and so has the world of politics that influence it. But like I said, very few criticisms of the Snape wives were as articulate as Ashley Reese's. Most of what was said about them was just basically boiled down to, ew, old women, gross. Also, I am an atheist and very smart, and they are clearly... Nothing worse than the edgy atheist boys making fun of girls. Like, they all, they're all they all just, like, different variations of blue, bro. Delusional. But yes, they did have some messed up opinions. And even if there's a lot of, uh. whatever, stupid fucking Harry Potter wizard allegories in there, they defended bigotry, they defended weird trad wifey subservience, they promoted purity culture and bullied other members for not being the right type of woman. Ew. It's just that most of the people talking about them online were no better. Everyone here sucks. Vincent says, I think political correctness has ruined TV series and movies. I don't think political correctness has ruined anything. I think... Uh, it's just not a vibe right now. Uh, it's, I just don't think it's political correctness that ruins things. I think political correctness happens everywhere at all times. Because everyone's, like, okay, being anti-political correctness is being your bubble's version of political correctness. You just think you're, like, the rebel. Political correctness isn't, it's a cultural phenomenon that says a group of people are not satisfied with the art being created and want it different. And now you're upset with the art being created and you want it to be different. That's all political correctness is. Like ultimately, this is a group of people. We're all groups of people saying, I don't like the art you're making right now. I want different art. So like I haven't watched a lot of movies or TV shows in a really long time because I've been unsatisfied with the art. So I've been watching a lot of anime. And that's me taking the power into my own hands. So instead of complaining about correct, like, you know, political correctness, which I think is just a social phenomenon of complainers, which we all are. I, instead of complaining, do something about it because, hey, I don't know if you know this, um, media is a global phenomenon and other countries are creating media. So if you don't like what's happening in America, watch Korean shows, watch Japanese shows, watch German shows, watch other shows. That's what I do. Get a VPN, watch other people's shows. They're like media is a global phenomenon. It doesn't just happen in your place, wherever you are. So the idea that political correctness is going to ruin things for you, you're just the group that is unsatisfied with what's being, ha but like every, every generation is going to be upset, but take your life into your own hands and find the media you like, because it exists. Guys, there are millions of books, millions of movies. If you don't like what's happening now, go back and watch old things, you know? Critical says, have you heard of the trend in TikTok where teens are stalking their crushes? If so, what's your opinion on it? Murder all of them. Just kidding. <laughs> No, come on, get, get get the fuck, get your shit under control, people. Stop stalking people. Stop stalking people. Stop Googling people. Stop going on Facebook and stalking people. Get your fucking shit under control. Stop stalking people. It's fucking mentally ill. Go to therapy. No, it's not cute. They should be banned from online activity. Their parents should be like imprisoned for being bad parents. Just kidding. But like literally get your fucking shit under control. Don't stalk people. You fucking freaks. 
Genuinely, I think you should put them in prison for 10 years. It's disgusting. Don't do that. Like, it's gross behavior. It is literally gross behavior. Literally, who? I just want to. It's gross behavior, bro. Stalking is not okay. Get your shit under control. Critical theory says there's a bunch romanticizing it, saying they want to be stalked. Well, that's the problem. Somebody said about my stalker, like, oh, what about the golden rule? Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. She is. Stalkers are literally treating you the way they want to be treated. They want to be obsessed over. They want to run their life around you. They want you to pay attention to them. It's why we don't mention her. It's why we don't uh, like, talk about her. We mention that the existence exists. We wish her the best. We wish her mental health, you know. But literally, you are the part of the, again, we're all evolved animals. And this is, this is this part of the species that basically evolved to be useless. If you're a stalker, you're basically useless because you can't even think or be empathetic enough to think like, how is this impacting the person I think I'm in love with or the person I think I like or the person that I'm obsessed with because you don't care. You're not good to yourself or your community. Stalkers are basically ones. It's a useless way to be. That's why I'm concerned about Snape wives or other people because I'm looking at them like, are you ones? Are you useless to yourself and your community? Maybe not, right? But that is insane to objectify people and to treat them in such a disgusting way that you end up creating narratives about them that aren't real, whether romantic or bad. You know what I mean? Like, it's not good for you. Live your life. Can you imagine? There's so much life to live and you are obsessing over someone else's life. You have so much life to live. Why are you spending it being obsessed with somebody who doesn't want you, bro? Crazy, bro. Congrats, guys. <laughs> you all suck. The Snape Wives community is thought to have been in decline by 2007, around the same time as the release of the last Harry Potter book. There's, there's a number of reasons for this. Number one is that all of the outside mockery made it difficult to sustain communities. And I don't just mean people saying mean stuff. It's the internet. There's a danger of doxing. There's a danger to their families and their careers. Like I was saying, people knew they had children and talked about calling child protective services on them. And at some point, you gotta ask yourself, is, is this Snape cult really worth it? I know one woman left because she had this revelation that that this was taking up way too much of her time and energy and that she needed to be spending more time with her children instead. Not to mention whatever the hell was going on with Tanya and her husband. Like, at some point, something this intense will take a toll on in real life relationships and you just gotta ask yourself if it's worth it. And a lot of people decided it was not. The second reason is that they kind of just imploded, kind of just tore themselves apart with their own discourse. A lot of people didn't want to tolerate it and just left or lost interest. Many of them wrote their dramatic breakup letters to Snape when they did leave. The absolute- Ren says, wait, when did this cross over from comfort characters to obsession over real life people? We're not talking, first, we're not talking about comfort characters, right? Aren't comfort characters a very specific bubble? I don't think, are comfort characters always obsessive? Because I don't think we should associate comfort characters with the obsessive mentally ill. I feel like these are two different things. Like Snape wives don't sound like people who have comfort characters. They sound like people who are mentally ill and obsessed, right? So I kind of feel like that's not a good probably association. I don't want to associate those things as the same. I feel like comfort characters are a very different phenomenon that has some overlap, but is not the same. So again, we're talking about categories and which category are we talking about, right? Because there is a line. I've, so, I've seen so many stories about people like murdering each other over fictional characters, people feeling like the spirit of them told you to do something. I mean, gosh, even Slender Man caused little girls to murder their, or try to murder their friend, right? Stabbed 19 times because of a fictional character on the internet. And the girl, to be fair, had schizophrenia and was hearing voices. The fear is if you don't get your shit together, guys, and this is my, this is my, my major tool for you. If you don't get your shit together and you are a combination of mentally ill hearing voices or mentally ill and obsessed and not grounded, you might do something you re heavily regret. This is my fear for humanity as an animal species is not, right, that you will have a comfort character. It's not that you will enjoy your life. It's not that you will read a book and feel like you feel seen. It's that you will lose such a grounding with reality. You will hurt people against their consent and in a serious way, and you won't know how you got there. I want you to have more control over your life, not less. Having more control of your life does not look like obsessing over a fictional character named Snape who does not exist and thinking in your mind he does. It's not shifting into a reality where you think the Bridgerton character is married to you and has kids with you. Absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. So my fear is that these people that seem so innocent because you slightly identify with them, you're forgetting that there's an extreme side to every well-intentioned nerd. And some of those nerds poison their best friends, drink. Some of those nerds get jealous and kill people. Some of those nerds stalk people and kill them because they didn't return their love letters. So make sure that if you're identifying with these crazy people, you might want to recontextualize that identification. Because I don't think they're you. I think there's something else. And if you think, again, just like I said with Julie and Eileen, if you look at these people and see yourself in them, you might want to reevaluate what you're doing with your life. If you see these people and you think I am like them, I really implore you to consider changing your life and being introspective and asking yourself if it's healthy and getting you to your joy. Brand says, I feel like that's every group ever. What does that mean, girly? Explain yourself because that doesn't make any sense to me at all. Like, because it sounds like you guys are saying like, it almost sounds like you guys are saying like, um, because, okay, you can have like five groups of kinds of dude bros, but every single specific nuance in those separations of dude bros lends you to different levels of harm or peace, right? So are you saying that everyone's a dude bro? Because I'm saying even if they're all dude bros, what shade of dude bro are they? Right? Because I'm saying there's one color here. Look at the screen if you're not. There's one color here that stalks and kills people and is still, you know, associated with the bubble. And there's one group that doesn't do that. Which one are you identifying with? Nail in the coffin, though, in, in their falling you know? apart was the... Sorry, Bryson says, if you're just flicking your bean to an anime character, she ain't talking about you. Yeah. If you're just like fantasizing, bro, I'm not talking about you. Okay. But if it, if you have, you know, hmm, there's like, see, the fact that you're even confused about which, like, which person I'm talking about makes me like, are you in any way identifying with this group of people? Because like, she's describing mentally ill people right now. These are like mentally unfunctional people. These are dysfunctional people in a specific way. If you identify with the dysfunction, why? Right? Ren says every group has obsessive people is what I mean, Christian Muslims. Yes, exactly. So I'm talking about the Muslims that blow people up. I'm talking about the Christians that like kill trans people. I'm talking about the incel atheists that shoot up a school. Yes? We're talking about the bad ones. The bad ones. Okay, do you identify with the bad group or do you identify with the good part of the group? Because if you're a Muslim, it's very bad to identify with the suicide ones. If you're a Christian, you do not want to identify with the ones that kill trans people. If you're an incel atheist, you do not want to identify with the ones that shoot up schools because the girl rejected them. Are you identifying with that shade of blue? Or are you identifying with the other shade of blue? I just believe in God and I have a good relationship with him. And yes, I'm anti-trans people, but I would never kill them. Yes, I'm a Muslim and I believe in Allah, but I'm not here to murder anyone. Yes, I'm an incel atheist and women frustrate me, but I'm not going to shoot them up. Do we understand the differences? These are different categories of people. Yes. So which category are you in? Which category are we in? Okay. Because if you are identifying with the crazy people, you need to reevaluate your life. The breakup, the dramatic friend breakup between Rose and Tanya. Rose writes, Tanya was my lily. She couldn't accept me for who I was. She couldn't deal with the close friendship we had. And what caused their falling out was that Rose's dedication to it waned, that she didn't want to be monogamous with only Snape anymore. And her husband, Kevin. He was there too. But she was starting to realize that she was interested in other fictional men as well. And she saw that as a natural evolution of her interests. Of course it is, but especially considering that Snape was treated so poorly by the Harry Potter canyon and there were other series coming out like Twilight, which, which gave us these canonical dark broody boys who did get treated well by the narrative, did get to be the heroes. And well, we're almost done with this. Whoa. Okay, hold on. Good conversations in the chat. Vibrancy says, doesn't everyone identify with the good shade of blue though? The shades of blue are not goodness to badness, guys. The shades of blue are categories. So the shades of blue are not meant to categorize good and bad. They're meant to categorize the specific. Okay, I'll, let's move. This is fun. Okay. So let's say. Let's say the Muslims that suicide bomb are like the last shade of blue on the categories picture on my screen right now. Okay. 
And the light shade of blue, the other shade of blue, the other three shades of blue are variations of um, Sunni, Shiite, variations of um, very like secular Muslim to religious Muslim. But only one category is the suicide bomber category. Only one category. All of these categories identify as good people. So the category system is not meant to categorize good or bad. It's meant to say, which kind of Muslim are you? Are you the Muslim category that bombs people? Are you the Muslim category that is like really religious and very to the T, but doesn't bomb people? Are you the religious category that identifies as Muslim, but you don't practice, but it's more cultural? Are you, it's not meant to categorize good or bad. So the shades of blue are not meant to say, I'm in the shade that's good. The good comes from your own moral judgment. So Brittany's moral judgment says, I'm in the category of this. This is my category, right? So the blue identifies like, okay, pies. The blues all that identifies pie. Cherry, strawberry, banana, blueberry. Okay, which shade of blue are you? I'm a strawberry pie. Which, stra which pie are you? It's not about good or bad. I hate bananas. So banana pie is the most disgusting one. So gross. I would never fuck with that color. But I'm a strawberry pie girl. The colors identify the categories, not the judgment. The categories, not the judgment. So if you notice yourself and you examine yourself and you're like, holy fuck, I'm in the category that like bombs people, suicide bombs people. Okay. Do you want to stay in that category or do you want to move to a different category? Oh my God. I'm the vegan that picks fights with every meat eater I know. Okay, do you want to be a different kind of vegan? Like the vegan that minds their own business, right? No, the shades of blue is the intensity in which one holds their convictions. No, oh my God, I love people's brains. No, guys, the shades of blue are not about intensity. They're not about extreme. They're different. Fuck, I love human brains. This is why we'll never have a peaceful world. I can't even communicate categories to people. Guys, <laughs> It's not about extremes. It's different. Okay, all the colors are pie. See how there's no extreme to pie? Which pie are you? They're not about extremes. It's not about good. You are putting no judgment. There's no judgment. It's neutral. Brown hair, red hair, blonde hair, blue hair. Which color are you? Do you want to be a blonde? I hear they have more fun. It's not about extremes. The shades of blue have nothing to do with goodness or extremes. They are simply different categories, different types. And the idea is which type are you? Yes, Sage says different groups of people in one group. Exactly. It's different kinds of people in the same umbrella bubble. So like everything is pie, but it's like what kind of pies? Okay. And then the question without judgment is which one are you in? And then do you want to be there? Right? Yes, Caitlin says a boot is a shoe, a flip flop is a shoe, a sneaker is a shoe. Exactly. So, which one are you and are you okay with it? Right? Vibrancy says, okay, I understand now. And it doesn't matter which one you are, uh, which one you are, it's only relevant to your own perspective of self and which category you feel most fits who you are. Yes. And then when you're there, you have to decide is that who I want to be? Right? So, which one do I want to be? So if you tell me I identify with this group of women, I'm like, oh, are you sure? Or are you saying you see parts of them that remind you of yourself, which is not the same thing? Because the, the Muslim who's casual, like a casual Muslim, can say, oh, I see myself in the extreme Muslim because we're all Muslim. Well, of course you would see yourself in them. But they don't mean I see myself in the extreme of the Muslim, like the bomb, the suicide bombing. Or oh, I'm a strawberry pie and I see myself in the banana pie, but I'm not a banana pie. But I understand because we're both pie, how we're the same. Are you saying when you say like these women are like similar to you, are you saying it's because you're both women who have a comfort character? Are you saying it's because you're women who like characters? Are you saying it's because you like Snape? Are you saying it's because like, you know what I mean? Yes, like an assorted cheesecake, all cheesecake, just unique in different slices. Yes, I want cheesecake now too. Mm, all this talk about pie, like pie and cake and mm. So it's that, that's what we're saying. We're saying, okay, I'm queer. What kind of a queer person am I? I'm Middle Eastern. What kind of a Middle Eastern person am I? I think everything can be categorized. Oh, I'm rock music. What kind of rock music am I? You know, 
So then the question is, who is this group of girls, right? And have love interests. And yes, it's true that they didn't really care a lot about the Harry Potter canon and they wrote copious fan fiction to fix it and, and whatnot. But speaking from- And yes, from the outside, it all looks the same to a person who doesn't know how to categorize. So Sage said that, right? That they're worried that from the outside, it's going to look the same to some people. So remember that too. This is why I love categorization because when I was younger, my parents would look at like musicians and be like, oh, they're all the same. They all have tattoos and weird hair. And I'm like, no, they're totally different genres. So like, I'm very particular. This is my neurodivergence. Like I'm very, like, that's not the right category. That's not the right category. Because again, like I watch dude bro podcasts. They are not all the same. But to a person who just hate dude bro podcasts, they're like all the same, but they're not all the same, right? When I watch feminists and people are like, oh, they're all the same. They're not all the same. If you keep thinking they're all the same, you're not going to see the nuance and what it means to be a person, how many options you have to live your life how you want, how many options the world has in creating culture. The world is so diverse, but we're not going to see the diversity if we think every feminist is the same, every dude bro is the same, every black person is the same, every white person is the same. So when I say, oh my God, you're, you're begging for attention just like a white woman, I don't mean all white women. I obviously mean the, ca the category of specific white women. When I say like, oh, white, white men, am I right? I don't mean all white men, men who are white. I'm married to a white man and she's very lovely, right? But I don't mean all white men. I mean the specific white men in which the context of this joke maps onto. Right? So that's what I do. It's like I'm asking myself, which person am I inter like interacting with? Which is why personally my behavior tends to change around the people I'm around. Because I know that this isn't about me. This is about them and interacting with them. And they're different from me. Usually I don't make people like do whatever I want. Usually I try to meet people where they are culturally. Right? I didn't come to Croatia and said, I'm America and now you must be America. No. So even countries are a good category system. Which shade of blue are you? I'm the Croatian's color because I'm here, but I'm American here, you know? Okay. Yes. We're all on the same page. Good convo. Good convo. Personal experience. It is more fun to be a part of a fandom when the ships and the characters that you prefer are preferred by the majority. There's so many more people to talk to and fan content to consume when you stand. I'm sorry, one more thing. It's just like with BDSM. I hated when certain people would represent BDSM because I have such a beautiful relationship with it. And then I just gave up. No matter what I do, the normies especially will take BDSM or even the people who did some BDSM and we disagree because I was in a different bubble. Oh my God, there was a girl on the internet. She's such a trash human. She literally accused me of like practicing BDSM with a non-BDSMer. First of all, that's well within my right and their consent. And two, I never did that. But because she comes from a BDSM bubble, we're all slapping is BDSM, which is crazy, by the way. Could you imagine assuming every slapping interaction you have is, is, is BDSM? All of Jackass was BDSM, guys. Newsflash, right? Like crazy. But that's her perspective. Fine. I can't engage with someone that crazy. That feels crazy to me to be like my alternative community that's completely underground. When vanilla people do it, they're doing BDSM. How fucking insane is that? But to her, it made perfect sense. But to me, I'm like, what? If vanilla people slap each other, is it BDSM? No. But to some people, yes. So that's why I try to be very like, how are you categorizing this interaction? Because that is not... That is not, you know what I mean? That is not how I see that, you know? But I gave up trying to like appeal to these bubbles and realize, okay, it's all different bubbles. How do I vibe with the people that are in the bubble? Because I don't want to have to argue with every single person I meet about like, what is this and what, it, you know, it's all different, girl. You know, it's all different. You enjoy it over there. I will enjoy it over here, you know? Edward and Bella versus... Astral plane Snape, the community of Snape wives, though forever an internet legend, dissolved. Rose continued to post on and off on her live journal until around 2011. I think her last post was like a review of the last Harry Potter movie or something. And then once she disappeared, that was it. Wow. Everyone was gone. There were no more remnants of this community left online. What really gets people about Snapeism, what really stands out is that it's just, it's not true. Like everything about it is just verifiably untrue, right? Mm. That's not a holy Walmart poster of God. That's uh, Alan Rickman! <laughs> but Alderton writes that the creation of fiction-based religions is an inevitable part of a society where identity is garnered from the consumption of these products. Mm -hmm. And that most established religions 
don't really line up with the historical record either. We just lend them validity because they've been around for a long time. It is popularly assumed that Christianity, by virtue of its age and the seriousness with which it has been endowed, is valid and worthy of respect. As scholars of religion, it is important to consider whether or not our methodological approaches are sound. It is easy to fall into the trap of considering religions such as Christianity to be a base standard for the examination of all other faiths. When faced with a contemporary manifestation of human behavior and beliefs such as fandom, it is also common to assume that nothing genuinely sacred can be born of live journal, dream with, or Yahoo groups. Yet there is much evidence to the contrary. Snapism satisfies even the most conservative definitions of religion by having a divine figure who can be channeled, a core inspirational text, a set of practices that modulate community behavior and expression. Because the historicity of traditional faiths can and must be challenged, this should lead us to ask why one fictional text is so much more ludicrous than another as a basis for a belief system. And that's Snape Wives for you. Wow. I, I, I hope that I did it justice. I included most of the things about it that I find really interesting. Thankfully, a handful of very smart and dedicated people have all- It's kind of interesting, this idea of like, is Snapism uh, as valid as Christianity or something? And I think that idea is like kind of funny to me because obviously the best way to know if something is real is to see its source. And if the source of your religion is the fictional imagination of a woman who's still alive and tweeting, it's probably not real. Like one of the ironies of new age religion or religion in which the creator of it was well within history and very not like we very much knew who they were. Feels weird to think like, so you think you were on the planet with like a prophet? You think like you, this person here, this one. This is the guy. This is the guy. You know, when you go further back and it's so far removed from recent history, it feels almost more believable because you can't go to the original source. Like the original source isn't in photographs and you can't be like, that's the guy. Really? That's the dude? That's the God? That's God right there in that photo being like, that's the guy? This is easily debunkable as not a valid way to think because you are worshiping the imagination of a transphobe, of a white woman, of a Twitter whore. Already done a lot of work on this that I could draw from. I will link the academic paper by Zoe Alderton, that, that article by Ashley Reese, and, and some other things that I find fun in the description. If for whatever godforsaken reason you want even more Snape Wives content. And if you know any stories that are similar to this, let me know in the comments or message me on Tumblr or something, because I love stuff like this. It just, mm. it, it just tickles my fancy. That is it for me today, my friends. But thank you so much for watching this video. And I'll cute, cute, cute. Good video. Let's like the video, guys. I'll go ahead and share it in chat. Like the video, share it in chat. Let's go. Great video. I will say great conversation that stemmed from this video. Even at first I was having a hard time with it. It's only because of my brain. But I really appreciate, um, I really appreciate that, uh, that coverage because it allowed us to have really good discussions. I will say Fresh and Fit is supposed to go on at 1 a.m. Uh, that's in a half an hour. I mean, I'd love to watch it live, bros. I almost want to take a break and come back because Fresh and Fit do this thing where they say they're going to start at one, but they start at two. So I'm almost tempted to like leave the live stream and come back and come on for it, but it's going to take a while or I can just cover it on Monday. I don't know. I kind of want to cover it live though. That'd be kind of interesting. We might, we might do it. I don't know. Um, with that said, Ingrid says, I love Harry Potter, but I also realize it's very flawed because it was written by a woman who's very much in her own bubble. I mean, I love Harry Potter. I've, I went to the book openings. I went to the movies. I cried, you know, like with my best friends reading Harry Potter. It was so good. I love fiction though. I've read like over 2000 books. Like I like reading. That's not weird or wrong to like things regardless of who the author is. You know, like I can like books. I never almost researched the authors for that reason. I just want to enjoy the art, honestly. Um, but I just don't make it my whole life, so it doesn't really matter who wrote it. And I think that's the difference is like, I don't care who wrote it because it's not my life. You know what I mean? But I, I think it's interesting when people make it their life like these women did here. But hey, what are you going to do? Everyone needs a hobby. I wish it was a little bit healthier though. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then